Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, let's watch Ryan Shirley, Australia video. My name's Connor, if you're new, hope you're all doing well. The original link to the video, top of the description. Let's get started. First video of the day. Ryan and I recently returned from exploring down under, and I want to show Sorry. I said the things, the original link to the video from Ryan's video, top of the description. If you haven't seen it yet or want to watch it on your own, go ahead. What's up, Sorry. guys? My name is Ryan, and I originally returned from exploring down under, and I want to share with you my favorite places. So here's my Australia top 10. Jurassic Park? Internet? Yeah. Crap. Australia is a massive country home to Ooh. some of the world's most beautiful and diverse landscapes. From the pristine beaches of Esperance to the tropical island of Lord Howe, Australia is waiting to be experienced. Let's start this video off on Tasmania. Located off of Australia's southeast coast, Tasmania is an island home to some of the country's best nature and wildlife. I spent a few days road tripping Tasmania and I was blown away by the beauty of this place. One of the main reasons I want I would love to go to, the, to Tasmania because... It just seems like, for the same reason I, I think I'd like to go to somewhere like Patagonia or, or New Zealand or Madagascar, is that they just seem like extremely isolated places with likely a lot of unique wildlife and just nature in general. To come here was to visit Cradle Mountain. It's located in the central highlands of Tasmania, and the area is part of Cradle Mountain Lake St. Clair National Park, and it's home to some of the most beautiful scenery in Tasmania. What really drew me to the area is Wombat? the wombats. They're the cutest animals I've ever seen, and there was this place called Ronnie Creek. I hear they have on their butt, like, uh, area is the wombats. They're the cutest, like, it's, it's pretty, like, hard, and, like, they can just, like, go into their burrow head first and... I, I'm kind. I'm not really sure. I shouldn't be spreading misinformation. I've ever seen, and there was I this think, place called Ronnie Creek the case. where you could go on these raised walkways, and we saw at least 20 wombats. I mean, it was so peaceful to hear them munch on the grass. I mean, talk about nature ASMR. Now, another incredible place in Tasmania is Cape Way, located on the Tasman Peninsula. Cape Way is home to some of the tallest sea cliffs in the southern hemisphere. You can reach it by a 10 kilometer hike, but we decided to take a boat tour out to Cape Way. It took us about an the, the The things again. The, uh, I didn't realize how common these uh, rock formation is. Like, it doesn't look like plate tectonics as much as uh you guys have explained what it is like the vertical column giants causeway looking you can rock. reach it by a 10 kilometer hike but we decided to take a boat tour out to cape way it took us about an hour to get there and the views along the way were amazing once we reached cape way i was just amazed by the size of the rocks and sea cliffs it was such a spectacular area after we're going to head to the mainland to visit western australia before i came to australia Earth? i thought it would be feasible to road trip across the country in a day or two <laughs> until i realized it was a 40 hour drive from sydney it's like as big it's uh, it's pretty much as big as the US, right? M maybe not quite as big. If you don't maybe if you like you don't count Alaska, but uh yeah. The 4-hour flight is definitely a faster I I'm pausing too much. <laughs> Until I realized it was a 40 hour drive from Sydney. The four hour flight is definitely a faster option, but if you want to do a week or two road trip, it would be an incredible drive. Now, the capital of Western Australia is Perth, which is the fourth most populous city in the country. What I particularly liked about Western Australia is its coastline. The beaches are home to white sands, crystal clear waters, and kangaroos just chilling on the beaches. The area around So, kangaroos Esperance guys are just a Australia wide thing, species. They're, they're all over the place. Central, Northern, Eastern, Western, Southern Australia. Also, I just I have in my mind this just barren sea of land between Perth and what's the closest? Alice Springs, Dar Adelaide. 
Like I just imagine just enormous, just desert roads, and I'd be afraid of breaking down or something. Particularly beautiful. It's home to some of the whitest sand in Australia and the world. I mean, I can't believe the beauty of this place. Now, special thanks to my friend, Earthwish Tom, for sharing his footage of Esperance. He makes thanks, great Tom. videos of Australia, and I'll link his channel in the description so you can check them out. One of my favorite beaches in Esperance is Twilight Beach. It's located 10 minutes outside the town of Esperance, and it has this massive rock just off the coast that is popular for some cliff jumping. Another beautiful place in the area is Cape Le Grand. It's a pristine coastline home to these untouched beaches and maybe you'll see some kangaroos roaming around. After, we're gonna head into Australia's center to visit the outback. And when Uluru. you look at Australia from space, you'll notice that basically all the cities are on the coast, but the interior of the country is an orange, desolate landscape with hardly anyone living there, and that's the outback. The most iconic landmark in the outback is Uluru, or Ayers Rock. It's a massive monolith made up of sandstone. You can reach the area by flying into the nearby town of Eulara or also by making the guys four hour drive from Alice Springs. Now, Uluru is a sacred site for the indigenous Australians Maybe and he'll is believed explain to be it. a resting place for ancient spirits. There's definitely an energy there and it's just bizarre how it sits alone in the desolate outback. Afterward yeah, ha ha this doesn't make any sense. How is this there? Is this one giant rock or is this part of the Earth's crust. Like, I, I'm wondering, is this the tip of a much larger... Like, is this surface area... Is this type of rock... I can't talk. Underneath the soil everywhere here? Or is this just kind of a big rock? How is this formed? How does this get here? Definitely an energy there, and it's just bizarre how it sits Ow. alone in the desolate outback. Afterwards, we're gonna head over to Brisbane, located on the east coast. If anyone knows the geology of Ayers Rock and what's going on, I'd love to know. Brisbane was founded in 1824, and today it's the third most populous city in Australia and the capital of Queensland. It's a beautiful city built on the Brisbane River and has an average of 260 days of sunshine per year. Just an hour from Brisbane is the Gold Coast, which is this incredible city with a huge beach called contrasted with skyscrapers. If you want a more natural setting, you can embark to the Glasshouse Mountains. Located about an hour's drive from Brisbane, the Glasshouse Mountains are a group of 13 volcanic peaks. They are some of the most peculiar mountains I've ever seen. The tallest is Mount Birwa, with an elevation of 556 meters. If you want to see them from the air, you can take a scenic plane tour to witness these unique mountains. After it, we're going to visit Whitehaven Beach. Regularly voted as one of the best beaches in the world, Whitehaven Beach is located located on the Whitsunday Island, and you can reach it by taking a boat or seaplane. The boat tour is the most affordable option, and you can reach Whitehaven by departing from places such as Airlie Beach or Shoot Harbor on the mainland. Once you arrive at Whitehaven, you'll be amazed by the surrounding scenery. The sand is made up of silica, giving it its white color, and when combined with the blue ocean water, it creates this swirly turquoise mix that winds back into the island's inlet, and it's just incredible to look at. You can get an elevated view of the area from the hill inlet look out. I mean, this place is on another level. Another incredible destination on the nearby mainland is Cape Hillsborough National Park. Now, when I imagine Australia, kangaroos on the beach always come to mind, and Cape Hillsborough is one of the best places in the country to see them roaming on the coast. Is a wallaby the... is a wallaby a type of kangaroo? Or is it completely different? Best chances of seeing them, you can wake up around 5 a.m. to witness the kangaroos and wallabies on the beach for sunrise. I mean, it's such an incredible setting with the rising sun and the kangaroos feeding on the mangrove sea pods and seaweed. After, we're going to head back to the ocean to visit probably one of the most famous places in Australia, the Great Barrier Reef. Also, guys, it's entering winter for you guys around now, right? Because you have the opposite. That's correct, right? It's located in the northeastern coast of Australia, and it's the biggest reef system in the world, stretching over 2,300 kilometers. It can be seen from space and is the world's largest structure made by living organisms. It's easy to see why it's one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It's home to over 10% of all the ocean's fish species, and there's also plenty of whales and sharks. I mean, it would be a dream to scuba dive here one day. A potential city to actually... Okay, 10%. <laughs> 10% of fish species, not 10% of fish, right? That's a big difference. Because it... Okay.
both are amazing. The Great Barrier Reef from is Cairns. It's located near some of the most prime coral reefs and islands of the Great Barrier Reef, and you can reach it by taking a 40-minute boat ride from... So the Great Barrier Reef is like the Amazon rainforest of the ocean? From coral reefs and islands of the Great Barrier Reef, and you can reach it by taking a 40-minute boat ride from Cairns. Afterwards, we're going to head up north to visit the Daintree Rainforest. Located about a three hours drive from Cairns, the Daintree Rainforest is a combination of massive mountains, pristine beaches, and possibly the oldest rainforest in the world, which began over 110 million years ago. The rainforest is home to animals cassowary. such as the southern cassowary, and I particularly like the area ago. The rainforest Could you f could this thing f fight you? Are these aggressive? It's home to animals such as the southern cassowary. I can and probably... I particularly like the area around Cape Tribulation. I mean, just so scenic with mountains covered in lush vegetation. It's definitely one of my favorite places in Australia. When it... Sorry, I to... Sorry, uh, my first instinct was like, can it from fight? Some mountains beautiful bird. Covered in lush vegetation. It's definitely one of my favorite places in Australia when it comes to natural beauty. After, we're going to head back to Australia's cities to visit Sydney. Located on the southeast coast, Sydney was founded back in 1788 as a British penal colony. And today, it's the most populous city in Australia of around 5 million people. It's home Did to the world famous Opera House, which was opened in 1973. I really like the beaches around Sydney. One of the most famous ones is Bondi Beach. It's located just 20 minutes out. Bondi Rescue. Outside of Sydney, and it's a massive beach and has some really cool pools alongside the ocean. Just down the coast is also Bronte Beach. It's smaller than Bondi Beach, but has its own charm. And there's this really cool public pool called Bronte Baths that you can get in if you don't want to swim in the ocean. A beautiful place outside of Sydney is the Blue Mountains. They are located about an hour and a half drive from Sydney, and it's this incredible mountain range that has a famous distinct really color do have due a to a combination of eucalyptus it. oil droplets from the forest combining with water vapor and dust, creating a blue hue. You. A great lookout point in the mountains is from the Three Sisters. It's only a short walk to the lookout. And you'll get an amazing view of the rock pinnacles and the mountains in the background. After, we're going to head to Melbourne, located in the state of Victoria, about a nine-hour A lot drive. of the geomorphology, is that the right word? A, a lot of the just the land of Australia looks very, very ancient. Like, it looks like most of the rock formations... Like were formed very long ago when it was probably more precipitous, precipit rainy. That's the word I'm looking for. But then again, it's very green, so there's probably still a lot of rain. It just looks super old. I'm no geologist, but I get that After prehistoric to feeling. Melbourne, located in the state of Victoria, about a nine hours drive from Sydney, Melbourne is the second most populous city in Australia and was ranked the world's most livable city seven years in a row. There's a lot to do around Melbourne, so just taking a drive Love to the, the trees. Black what? For forest. Bro, there's a lot to do. Oh my God, this is amazing. They look... Like the kind of trees we have around here with the bark stripped off. You around Melbourne, so just taking a drive through the scenic Blacksburg Forest. One of the most famous places in the area is the Twelve Apostles. Located about a three hours drive from Melbourne, the Twelve Apostles is a set of limestone sea stacks. There was originally eight of them, but one collapsed in 2005 due to the constant erosion of waves and wind. Why? Right, I'm sure they're all going. You're there, you can morrow at the. I'm sure they're all gonna collapse, right? And then. So these were an extension of this cliff. So it was out here, and then a lot of it falls, and some of it stays up and forms these. And and eventually these will, will the fall. The Twelve Apostles is a I'm set assuming. of limestone sea stacks. There was originally eight of them, but one collapsed in 2005 due to the constant erosion of waves and wind. While you're there, you can morrow at the stacks from the boardwalk and many viewpoints. For our final destination, we're going to visit Lord Howe Island. Located in the Tasman Sea between Australia and New Zealand, you can reach Lord Howe Island by taking a two-hour flight from Sydney. The island is just insanely beautiful. It's called the Hawaii two of hours. Australia, and after visiting it, I 
understand why there can only be 400 tourists on the island at a time. And another interesting fact about Lord Howe is that it's the largest island ever to eradicate all its rats, which in turn has allowed the birds and wildlife to flourish here. One of the main reasons I wanted to go to Lord Howe Island I that was snakes the or something? false pyramid. It's the tallest sea stack in the world with a height of 572 meters. It's one of the wildest rock formations I've ever seen as it sits alone in the desolate ocean. It looks like a giant dorsal fin. Now to get to Ball's Pyramid, it was about an hour boat ride from Lord Howe Island. Wait, hold on, guys. He said it was a two-hour plane drive. Plane ride, plane drive. How far away is New Zealand? If that's two hours. I think these distances are a lot longer than I thought. Island. You can reach Sorry. the boat ride from Lord Howe Island. We went with this tour company called Reef and Beyond Eco Tours, and it was an adventure getting there. We boated around the entire sea stack, and I was just baffled by the scale of this place. I felt like Jack Sparrow discovering a treacherous island. We were going to snorkel in the water, but the sea was too rough, so it wasn't possible. After exploring Ball's Pyramid, we headed back to Lord Howe Island and got oh some God, incredible so views cool. along the way. While we were on Lord Howe, we had bikes to get around, and we did some great hikes. One of my favorites was Malabar Kim's. There were some incredible views of the sea cliffs, and then we walked on the ridge line to Kim's lookout, and we were able to get an amazing view of the full island. I mean, this place is paradise. Another one of my favorite things that we did on the island was snorkeling. Lord Howe is home to the southernmost coral reef in the world, so there's tons of great snorkeling spots. We went to Ned's Beach and had a great time swimming in the warm, clear waters. We saw plenty of fish and a few sea turtles. I remember being at a, a, a water park called X Carre. Um... Uh, near, uh, it, it's in, oh my God, it, Mexico, the, the peninsula, it's a water park in Mexico on the water, and you got to put a, like a, it was like an 80 pound, like white helmet on, like a big, like you could breathe under it, right? It had like a glass viewing thing, and it was one of the most memorable, coolest things I've ever, had a because Where's the sea turtle? I'm swimming in the warm. There's tons of great snorkeling spots. We went to a few of the sea turtles. I pet a sea turtle while walking on the seafloor. It was crazy. It, like, I, you, because the thing's like 80 pounds and it weighs you down to the bottom and you can breathe in it perfectly fine. I, it, it was the most trippy experience. Like, because there was a path, there was like a walking path down there. And then uh, there was a sea turtle, and you could you just pet the sea turtle. It was so cool, and it wasn't like in a in a tank, like it, it was connected to the ocean. So like the sea turtle wasn't like captured in the park. It was just there. Oh, that was so cool. Turtles. Now for sunset, I love going down to Lagoon Beach to watch the sun light up the mountains of Lord Howe. Places don't get more perfect than this island. Well, that is it for my Australia top 10. I'm barely scratching the surface. I mean, there's so much to see in this incredible country, so I'll be back for part two. Let me know where your favorite place is in Australia in the comments below. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later. Make sure to check out his stuff, guys. Um, Ryan Truly, tremendous channel. Love his videos. I, I, it's, I'm using the same words I always use, like tremendous, amazing. But the, the photos, visuals in these videos are so unbelievably awesome. Really cool. Love you all. Hope you guys are all doing well. I'd appreciate any comments down below. If you're from Australia, New Zealand, or wherever, I think I'm going to watch in New Zealand next. Um... But yeah, I would appreciate any answers to my questions, any comments at all. Hope you're all doing well. If not, chin up. You'll be good soon. Don't worry. Bye, guys.